So before we get into this video, I thought it's worth noting that it took me quite a long time to decide to go ahead and make it. I filmed it last June, about four weeks before the start of the Penn Celtic, and uh, I guess it kind of shines a light on the start point of the issues I had during the race and the problems with my knee and then the painkillers. Anyway, I've done it. And here it is. So, I've been going for about 50 minutes. I've just come from Exeter where Chris and Mike had dropped me off. See you luck, Alex. <laughs> so I avoided the hills of Devon and Cornwall. And today, tomorrow, and possibly the day after that, I'm riding a massive loop about a thousand K with a little pit stop tomorrow for an extra little ride. I've mainly been on main roads from Exeter until now, so I've not filmed any of that. But I found this amazing little lane. It's absolutely tiny. So we're gonna ride along here for a bit. gone up a rather brutal climb out of Sidmouth and reminded me of the reason why I'm doing this ride and it is essentially a race simulation I've got all the stuff I take on the race and the course overall is around about the same sort of elevation as the Pan Celtic per kilometer so it'll be a good test of my fitness and my kit Speaking of which, I've already got some brake rub. But I can't complain. The weather is on point. If a little too hot. Seems to be getting most of the elevation of at least the first leg of this ride out fairly early on. <laughs> at least it means it'll be faster later on. So my average pace at the moment is only about 23 kilometers an hour, which is well below what I'd like to be getting on today's ride. And at the moment I'm averaging now I've got a main road. Right, where was I? 23 meters per kilometer, which is an awful lot of elevation gain. The ride overall is about 10. So I've got a fairly flat stretch between Charmouth and Bridport. Just after Bridport, it climbs up again, and I've got a big old descent down to Chesil Beach. Another flat section until I'm approaching Weymouth. So hopefully by that point, my speed should be up again a bit. past Bridport and I'm climbing again but the average speed has gone up to about 25 kph and meters per kilometer is about 20 now it's a bit more like it make up Chesil Beach over there So I'm at the 
top of the climb before descending now to Chesil Beach. That is spectacular. Look at that. Weymouth is over there too. I think we'll pull in there to get some food. The time is half past six. My moving time is three hours, 40 minutes. Done about 90 kilometers, 1,900 meters of climbing. So we should pick up a bit of pace across the new forest. I'd best crack on. Right, it is seven o'clock. I am in Weymouth and it is dinner time. That will keep me going for a little while, I think. I used to come down here as a kid with my grandparents. It feels quite sentimental to me, really. It's about half past eight, so I've got about another 40, 50 minutes of light. Or at least I've got about another 40, 50 minutes before the sun starts to go down. And I am at Lulworth. We're about to go up. Bit of an epic climb, it's gorgeous. So good. But it's a bit of a brute. Then go along the ridge and drop down and head up towards Blanford Forum. Should be a good evening. get much prettier than that. Does the military really do hog all the best roads for themselves, right? So it's getting on for about 10 p.m. The light is gonna fade pretty fast now and I'm probably gonna put my jacket on in a minute. But I am approaching Blandford Forum. I might have to go into the town and take a detour to go to a shop because I'm out of water. I've got some food left, but I will get thirsty and I don't wanna get caught out. Right, water in a couple of espressos later. Let's hit the road. Saturday night. So I need to find some water and some food while I'm here because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find anywhere for the next hundred miles or so, which could be problematic. So it's 1.30, done about 230 kilometers. I think the start of the ride really took it out of me to begin with. I really struggled in the heat and on the climbs. So I'm supposed to be getting to Effingham by eight o'clock tomorrow morning, which is only six and a half hours away, which is another 130 kilometers down the road. So I think that'll take me five or six hours 
at least. Let's see if we get on. Maybe to Winchester. What's that, 250, 260 kilometers? Something like that. Now onto the South Downs. I already struggled through part of the night with motivation, the cold, just the desire to to get it done. But when you roll through and see things like this. when no one else is around, just you and the birds. It's one of those things that really does make it all worthwhile. So I'm about 45k away from the first pit stop. And then things are gonna get a little harder again. At least for a little bit. Anyway, the jacket's off, but the top is completely wet through, so maybe the jacket will go on again in a minute because I feel like this descent is going to be really cold. But I was t far too hot on the climb, and I need to let this dry out. Okay, so this is actually where I stopped filming, about a few kilometres out from the Queen Stage Inn in Effingham, where I met up with Chris and Mike here again, along with the rest of the guys from Lacole, for the first ever Lacole Cycling Club ride out, out over the Surrey Hills. I didn't get any footage from the ride, but I managed to pick up a couple of photos from Tom Austin and Phil Hill, and we'll catch up with the rest of my ride after these. I'm now continuing on with my route with a slight change of plan as the elevation was much, much higher than originally planned. And I want my training for the Pan Celtic to be on point. So hopefully my new route, which takes me via Oxford, Devizes, Bath, before crossing over into Cornwall, and back to Truro. Hopefully, it'll have a little less elevation. So I've been getting some knee pain. As you can see, I've got quite a sharp tan line from where I've had my strapping on. I've just been getting a bit of pain here. I'm a little bit concerned by it, but I've got another 500k to go, so I've got to do something, haven't I? So a bit of a disappointing end to a rather epic trip, but I'm limping to Reading train station where I think a sleeper train awaits me to take me back to Cornwall. I think it's a case of playing it safe. I want to make sure that I've got every chance of doing as best I can in the Pen Celtic. I put myself in to see Scott at Kona Physio. So, uh, We'll get sorted. I'm gonna rather unceremoniously say thank you for watching and I'll see you next time, hopefully, for some better news. Bye bye.